Hello and welcome to this recap of today's CodeBuddies.org live coding session. CodeBuddies is a global community of amazing people who help each other become better at software development through conversations on Slack and peer-to-peer -peer organized study groups and virtual hangouts. In today's session, we took a small task, but significant, on the way to migrating data from a Drupal site to Wagtail CMS, which is powered by Django. So let's take a quick look at um, the workflow and code for modifying the data. On the browser screen, we have a view that is creating a CSV file of these taxonomy items, article authors. Uh, the bigger picture here is we're migrating the Western Friend Magazine, so I'll just show you real quick, which consists of several entities, several related entities. Magazines, uh, the magazine has issues. Each issue has one or more articles, and each article has authors and some other metadata. But essentially, issues, articles, and authors are all separate entities in the database and are going to be connected by essentially foreign keys, uh, many-to-many relationship in the case of articles and authors. So we've previously gone through the issues export and today uh, we're exporting the authors. Now one of the problems, and we were aware of this at the time we made a decision of a trade-off and a limitation of uh, Drupal's entity relationships uh, in, uh, user interface, and the taxonomy user interface is that we wanted to be able to enter and create or select from the authors at the time we were creating articles so that you didn't have to jump around in too much while you're uh, creating the magazine content. Make it easy, make life easy on the editor. Um, after some discernment and discussion, we just decided that uh, article authors would uh, just be one field, a name field, and that's basically what the Drupal taxonomy defaults to. Uh, so now, you know, a couple of years down the line, we're migrating the data. So my task is to kind of clean up the technical debt and get us a little uh, further down the road, improving the situation, and so that we don't have to do too much manual cleanup. Uh, there are some cases where we're going to have to do manual cleanup with some of these author names. Um, and there's more examples that I've found uh, where even article titles somehow were entered as, well, here's one as authors. I don't know, it's kind of confusing, but so that said, let's take a look at the code. There's not too many lines of Python and it's just from the standard library. So this is a really great example of how uh, concise and if, you know how efficient and productive you can be with Python. So we import the CSV. Um, library, I was thinking maybe we could use JSON uh, for the structured data. The Drupal um, views export, views data export module doesn't have a maintained JSON serializer or JSON exporter, so uh, these are my choices. I'm sort of keeping it simple. I don't want to install uh, an unmaintained module from last release 2014 with uh, <laughs> an unknown security uh, advisory policy, like it's not covered by the Drupal security advisory. So in your case, you know, we're migrating away from Drupal for several reasons. Overall, it's a good, and I think Drupal 8 is a very much improved platform, but I don't want to go too deep into the decision and the rationale there. I'll just focus on the code here. Um, primarily that my main focus lately has been Python and Django and then Wagtail was a natural fit and gives you a WordPress-like experience of simplicity. And the sort of the administrator who is responsible for structuring the site, um, creating the functionality, everything is in code, in Python code. All right, so just created a, an empty list here. Um, instead of using a generator or something, I'm just going to append to a list. We're going to basically read a CSV that's from the disk that's exported from Drupal, parse each of those authors, split the last name and first name or family name and given name, and save it to a new CSV. 
the assumption I'm operating under is that you can treat a string as a list of names and that the last list space separated name in that list will be the last name or the given uh, family name sorry we're using the schema.org uh, nomenclature here so I think that's f to support more international names and not some Western of names. In any case, it's still kind of confusing. I'm used to saying first and last name. So we're going to open an empty file. I'm sorry, the export file, excuse me. And we're going to read it into the CSV reader and then convert it to a list. That's all pretty straightforward. A couple lines of Python. I could have done it in one line, but I kind of like separating out the steps a little bit for readability. Then for each of those authors, we're going to split it by the spaces, like I said. So uh, this a time for parables and poetry would be one, two, three, four, five, six, a list with six items in it. We're going to pop the last item off of that list, which actually mutates the list. So now it's changed. We'll save that value and family name, and then we'll join back that list, the remaining items in that list, by spaces. So again, it's just the same as it was, uh, minus that value that we popped off the end of it. There's probably, you know, different ways of doing this, uh, various list indexing techniques uh, where I wouldn't have to mutate that. I think it's pretty readable. Uh, this is sort of a one-off script, so I'm satisfied. Um, with this approach. We're going to create a dictionary here, and then we're going to append that dictionary uh, to the parsed authors list. And the second part is just exporting this, the authors parsed CSV. I'm prefixing everything with authors so that it's easy to see on the uh, file system what, uh, what are the related uh, files. Uh, so we open this CSV file and tell Python we're going to write to it. Um, not sure this was just in the example, so this new line, I don't know what it would default to otherwise. Um, so I went with it. it. Seems to work. And opening that as par parsed author CSV. Uh, with the, let's see, the writer, you actually, you explicitly need to tell it what the field names are. It's not going to um, implicitly determine those from the dictionary keys. Um, the dictionary reader does implicitly uh, determine those field names from the dictionary keys. So that's pretty cool. In any case, a little bit of a redundancy here, given name and family name, just having to tow those along, but not a big deal. Uh, so we create a dictionary writer with the CSV file, uh, this empty CSV file, and the field names. And we write the header row, so it's going to have the field names in there. And then for each of those parsed authors, we're going to, we just write a row. And voila, we have some transformed data. So we've extracted the data from Drupal. We've transformed it locally. And before loading it into Wagtail, we're going to have some manual verification and a little bit of cleanup. So I stopped at this step today, and we're going to have some hopefully cleaned up data by the next coding session. And at that point, I will finish out the loading step here, as well as work with the articles uh, content and try to import all of those together. Issues, article, issues, then authors, then articles, all linking together uh, with a three entity sort of graph of relationships. Okay, well, this has been a review of today's codebuddies.org live coding session. If you're interested in doing Python or Django work, um, contributing to an open source project, codebuddies.org is currently under a rewrite on github.com slash codebuddies. If you look at the backend project, we're rewriting it in Django and there's work on a React front end. We have tasks for developers of all experience levels. We're really good about helping new developers who are wanting to learn and contribute to an open source project. And we have a fairly easy um, workflow for getting your development environment set up and everything else. So 
again, stop on by codebuddies.org if you want to just participate in the community or github.com slash codebuddies to contribute to the open source rewrite. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.